good evening and rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, NBC family and friends. Stephen and Katrina, Cynthia Green, Donja, Tegan, Sherelle, Shayla, Dale. Good evening. Allison, Dr. Austin, Cara, Simone, Sister Ann. Good evening. Nicole, I see you over on YouTube, girl. Christina Peoples. KBJ and Jace. Crystal, happy graduation promotion, uh, Greg Reed. I don't know what to call it. Eighth grade to wrap. I got it. I got the text. It's over. It's over. Minister Constance. Yo, the Mifees, Uncle Maddie Uncle, and Uncle Uncle Mario. Uncle Mike and Uncle Maddie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Evening, Linda. Hill, Israel, good evening. Dr. Tatum, how you doing over there? Good evening, Ms. Hobbs, Mavis, Rochelle, Bonita, Missy. I see you over on YouTube. Rejoice, Shy, Cheryl, <laughs> Jazz. Hey, CJ. Hey, CJ. Hug somebody, tell them that you love them. Oh, that's at the end. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, Jazz. Reverend Payne, what to the what, what, sir? To the what, what, what? Sister Irene over on YouTube. Amen. All is well, sir. Big Daddy is. Sister Shirley, Brother Sutherland, good evening. 12 Toast, Sister Irene. Bink! It's good to see you all in the virtual house of the Lord. First Lady Cousin, Katisha, good evening. All right, all right, all right. Well, it's 7.05. On the block. Oh no, no, that's drug dealers. With my drop top. That's correct. Close enough, huh? Yes. <laughs> that's correct. I'm never gonna get it right. That's okay, Stephen. <laughs> but I did get Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. <laughs> <laughs> you did you did get that. You get that. You, you got that, Pastor. Uh before we get started, I just want to say. Uh, I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask, are they a part of the NBC Text Club? Now, we have an extended family on uh, on our Facebook Live, and every week when I'm reading midweek announcements, I can't help but think there are some of you who don't get this information. And while you haven't yet put your name on the roll, although some of you should, amen, uh, you can stay connected with all things NBC by texting NBC AME to 33222. That's how you can stay connected until you decide to join. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to leave that up there while we're reading that. Hold on. CJ and Sister Irene laughing at me. I just don't know if I like that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. New Birth Community African Methodist Episcopal Church midweek announcement 2022. The year of intent, New Birth Community AME Church, our vision continues to reign true. Born to praise God and serve his community in mind, body, and soul. So tomorrow and every Thursday, we have prayer call. Uh, prayer call takes place at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can tap in. Somebody say tap in. Tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap in. That was for you, Jazz. Uh, you can call 336. 663-0110. And the access code is NBC AME spelled out on your phone. That's 6222263. Good evening, Reverend Dawn, Reverend Amy, Otis Prince. Good evening. Um, anybody can join us for prayer. That's anyone anywhere can join us for prayer. Pastor's appreciation. That's good, Pastor. Yeah, okay. Pastor's appreciation is upon us, <clears throat> and this is year 19. And I want to make a special point to say this is year 19 of NBC, but not year 19 of our pastor uh, pastoring and doing what she does in the name of the Lord. Um, this year, we are honoring her by giving $10 per year she's been with NBC, and that's 19. So we're asking each member, each non-member, each soul that's been blessed by a word from her lips, to give 190 or more to show your love and gratitude for her leadership and her kingdom service. So you can use the pastor's cell phone number or her email address to zail or PayPal her 
your contributions. We do truly believe what Luke in the sixth chapter, 38th verse says, that if you give and it will be given to you. I put an if on the front of that. It does not say if. It says give. And it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So increase your measure with the seed in this fertile ground that we call Pastor Kathy a Mary. For the harvest is truly plenteous. Amen. Quarterly in-person service. You don't want to miss it. It's the June night, Sunday, June 19th. Hey, Megan, June 19th. Um in Greensboro High Point, North Carolina. Uh, registration is required to make sure that we are uh, staying above board and here. I'm trying to give you my graphics as I'm saying this, y'all. So let me see. I can't find that one. That's okay. But registration is open. Uh, boom. There we go. Registration is open. You can visit www.ndcame.org backslash in-person service registration. Uh, registration is free and it is open to everyone. Uh, it will be held at the Hilton Garden Inn on Highway 68 in Greensboro. And the wardrobe for those who are participating in service, hey Carlos, um, is in your announcements. Uh, and the wardrobe is only required for those who are ministers, administrators, or are participating in the music ministry on that Sunday. Hey, Aunt Mert. Hey, hey Aunt Mert. That's my auntie, y'all. Hey, Aunt Mert. Can somebody say, hey, Aunt Mert? Hey, Aunt Mert. <laughs> um, <laughs> the seasoned saints uh, will be meeting and having dinner at Crackle Bear on Inslee on Friday, June 17th at 6.30 p.m. Um, as a reminder, the season thanks is for anyone who is age 50 or older. And if you're interested in participating in the season saint event or in the ministry as a whole, please contact Sister Katrina, uh, mm -mm, Christina People. Okay? All hey, right. Margaret Maxwell's on. Everybody say, hey, Margaret. Hey, hey Sister hey, Margaret. Hey, Sister hey. Margaret. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think those are all the announcements for highlighting on this evening. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our pastor, the right Reverend Kathy A. Merritt. Hey, hey, hey. Katisha's trying to get in on the Cracker Barrel deal with the season saints. Ain't that something? Hey, everybody. Hey, Bink, Tisha, Margaret. Uh, Cheryl Stephen, Dr. Austin, Dr. Tatum, Dr. Doldrin, hey, 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 Sister Katrina, Reverend Gooch, Reverend Fairley, Minister Constance, Minister Constance coming through, I like it, I like it, I like it, Sister Ann, hey, 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 did you guys register for in-person service, let's get that done as quick as possible, once again, congratulations to the promotion of our own Greg Reed to the ninth grade, that's a big boy, we thank God for him, amen. We might have to send donations to keep feeding him over there to that house, to the day household. Amen. Amen. V, come on. Otis, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Missy, good evening. Good evening. First lady cousin, good evening. Good evening. Okay, guys, there's a word from the Lord. Let's bow our heads that we might get started. Lord bless. Lord bless. That girl said we receive. <laughs> Lord bless. Uh, um, Sunday's message was entitled, Be Responsible How You Are While You're Where You Are. Put that up. Be responsible for how you are while you're where you are. Now, since this is Bible study, since this is Bible study, you're going to leave that title up. Since this is Bible study, we want to make sure that uh, everybody gets to exchange. I gave some examples on Sunday. And I want to make sure that we got an understanding of the examples that I use because I use the football analogy. We want, talk about, we want to talk about that. We want to make sure that there's a clarity going on. First of all, let's start by the basics. Let's do some basic definition so we'll understand where we're going. Be responsible. What does responsibility mean? Be responsible. What's responsibility? Let's go from the foundation of it. Foundation of it. We're tied in later. I need a haircut, guys. Foundation of it. What's responsible? Us being responsible. Hey, Mama Donna. 
It was critical lesson part six. Thank you, Dr. Austin. Taking ownership, I like it. Accountability, I like it. <sighs> Accountability, good, good. Mavis, Simone, <clears throat> Nicole. Ownership, Katisha, good. To own, good, Kara. Careful, I like it. I like it, Shy. Uh huh. Accountability, Sister Katrina. Accountability held accountable. <clears throat> Mrs. Hobbs, ownership. Reverend Amy. Taking responsibility, taking responsibility. So when someone takes says take responsibility, what is what is the action? What is the what is the action that motivates you to take responsibility? <laughs> this is a little twist now. What is the motivation that makes you take ownership? What's the motivation? When people take ownership of something, there's often a motivation. It can go one way or the other. What's the motivation? Jessica said desired outcome, positive outcome. Investment, I like it here. End result, Dr. Dahl doing good. Reward, good, Simone. Personal gain, okay, I like it. End result, okay, personal gain, good, 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 good. Good, good, good. There's a motivation when someone says conviction, that says take responsibility. And sometimes it's not always positive, all right? Should I say other, others might be watching you trying to achieve something, okay, okay. Uh, good, 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 good. Okay, okay. Better improved status or state. Okay. When you're taking responsibility, there are a couple of reasons why. There's one end of the pendulum to the other. A lot of times it's a positive outcome. You know, you take responsibility because it's the right thing to do and people look upon you favorably. And the other time you take responsibility because you have no other choice. <laughs> All right. So there's two different ends for your consequences. I like that, Carlos. So Carlos is coming from the other end. Los is coming from the other end. So we have two different extremes why people take responsibility. All right. And, and it also it all involves what will be the outcome. So it is in result, more or less. So when I say be responsible for how you are, that means we're going to talk about the universal uh, part of the statement, which is while you're where you are. See, that's universal because you're all you're all somewhere. You all get that? We're all somewhere. Uh, it's like when the Lord uh, in the word of God talks about sin. Uh, we've all sinned and fallen short, okay? And we talk about circumstances. We, we all got stuff. You know what I'm saying? We talked about the pressure, the stress, and the affliction. We all have stuff. So if we all have stuff, I've got to be responsible because sometimes the stuff I have is not of mine. It's not because I put myself into it, okay? It's not because I've done something to be where I am in all at all times, okay? But there's only one thing I have control over. I have control over how I am while I am where I am, okay? Let me break that down. We're going to talk about this slowly because you got to get this. We all got stuff. We all been in stuff. Not all stuff we're in or we're a part of is because of our own actions, Okay, let's repeat that. See, those things are universal. Those things are universal. Some things that the Lord has given us through his intent, that is, that's what he wants us to have. That's where he wants us to be. Okay? And so it's not because I put myself there. It's his intent for my life. It's, it's a part of my journey. So we all have a while. Somebody say, I have a while. That's good, CJ. I like it. I like it. Okay, so we all have a while. Write that down. We all have a while, W-H-I-L-E. We all have one. Those are your circumstances. Those are your circumstances. Because <clears throat> some, some of the things that you're in and some of, some of the situations that, uh, that you rest or the current circumstances that you're in, you had nothing to do with it. It is just what it is. Uh, one of uh, 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 my members lost their job. Because the company folded, <laughs> not because she wasn't an excellent employee. No, 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 no. She lost her job and, and then lost her home as a result of it and then lost her car as a result of it. Can somebody say that wasn't her fault? She was an awesome employee until the company folded. You all understand that? 
but she still had to go through it. So she had to go through her while. Okay. See, some of us have difficulties understanding how we're supposed to be going through our while. And, and this is where you got to be responsible for. It. This is where you make choices. Okay. And so Sunday I talked about, I talked about going back to the roots of things, going back to course 101. And we got to stop rushing through 101. Because if you rush through 101, you'll never be able to journey well. My God, daughter, you'll never be able to journey strong because you're too busy trying to get some place because you know the playbook. Okay, so let me break down the example that I gave on Sunday. I gave the example Sunday of a, a wide receiver, which is, the, for those of you who don't know football, is the dude, the guy that catches the ball. The one the quarterback says, go wide, go deep, is the one that the quarterback is throwing the ball to. Now, granted, because the quarterback, uh, uh, the, 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 the wide receiver is running, he does not see, because he's running a route, he does not see the quarterback because he has memorized a route. Somebody say memorize the route, which is called journeying, okay? So he's memorized the journey. I accuse the church members of doing the same thing. I accuse the church, and I still stand there, of having their people run the journey without getting what they're supposed to get in one-on-one. And what they're supposed to get is the fact that Jesus saves <laughs> and that we believe that we're supposed to have faith in everything and he's supposed to see Jesus and God in everything that happens in our lives. And we can only get that, just like the wide receiver, if we secure it. Somebody say secure. And when I say memorize the rock, I mean, some of y'all got scripture down to a science. <laughs> Some of y'all can memorize scripture better than me, and I'm the pastor. I mean, you can quote scripture, don't know what the hell it means, but you be quoting it. <laughs> don't know how to write the divide, but oh, you be quoting it. Ebonics. So that's memorizing the rock. You, you memorize something, you memorize something, but your application lacks. Write that down. When, you, when you're memorizing and your application lacks, the first thing we should do is secure. Secure. All right. And so I likened it into a wide receiver going up to catch the ball, catching the ball, or thinking he's catching the ball, but begins to move too quickly before he secures the ball. Securing the ball means brings it closer to the body and holds it to make sure he has it. So what he does, because he knows the play, he's running this route, but before he can secure it, because he feels it on his fingertips. Somebody, I'm preaching to you sometimes. Uh, because he feels it on his fingertips, he just immediately goes into the, to the route. But he doesn't secure it. And hence causes a fumble. All right? Which in turn could be an interception. All right? That's football, guys. All right? I know all these sports uh, analogies I'm giving. I liken it unto what we do at church. We memorize scripture because we're trying to get to the finish line, but we lack application. And we lack application because we don't secure the word of God. We, we don't make it our own. We don't, we don't, we don't bring it to us. We, it doesn't become a part of us. It just becomes a part of the routine that you know these are the words you say to make people think you really know the Lord. I'm talking to you. Right. I'm talking to you because some of you are guilty of it. OK. And so you memorize the word, but you cannot apply the word. And so you're running without the ball. And that's what happens in our daily lives. We're running without the ball. I got a bunch of Christians out there just running, just running, just running. Can't apply the word. And you say, well, Pastor, how dare you say they can't apply? They can't apply the word because everything makes them cry. Everything breaks them down because if you knew word, you would be undergirded. If you knew word, there would be some strength there. Because when the word says, when I am weak, that's when he is strong. And so if there's a weakness that comes about and I secured that word, I believe what the word says. 
I believe what the word says. See, I know when I'm getting weak. Let me tell you something. Just happened 30 seconds before we got on. I ate something really quickly before we got on because I hadn't, I was famished. And all of a sudden, right before it was time for me to come on, my mouth starts watering. I, I'm not trying to gross you off, but I don't know if anybody ever had that. And I got nauseous immediately. And I thought I need a way of escape. What would I do? I don't want to just bark all over the screen. So what do I do? I thought, mm, shut the laptop down quickly. Then I leaned over and had one of my engineers get me a mint, something to settle my stomach. Because although I knew what I was supposed to be doing, I was about to have a fumble. But then I remembered when I was weak, that's when he's strong. Do, do you understand that? I received that. I own that word. So I didn't try to go through this by myself. I immediately trusted the word, immediately accessed because I remained calm. Somebody say remain calm because the battle is not mine. I immediately remained calm in what I was going through seconds. I'm talking about seconds before I got on and I continued to move accordingly. Because I began to move, I secured the ball. I secured the word. When I'm going through, I secure the word. I don't just memorize it. I make it mine. We become one. I hold it close to me. It is real to me. Jesus is real to me. And it, it, it is that thing that helps me through my journey. It is the thing that helps me through as I'm running my routes. Do, do y'all understand? Can, can you get that? Can, can, you, can you get that? And so everything, everything just cannot be excitable. You can't just get excited over everything. Some things you just got to take it one step at a time. You, you, you got to walk through. You got you to walk the play out. You, you got to memorize your playbook. All right. And that's what the Bible is. Quit thinking it's a bedtime story. It is a playbook. It is an instructional manual. And preachers, teachers, evangelists have to begin to teach it as such. You have to believe what the word says. That's right. Faith without works is dead. You've got to believe what the word says. It wasn't meant to tingle your ears. It wasn't meant to make you feel good because we all go through. Going through is universal. I have never met anybody who hasn't been through. And if I do, I don't want to see them again. I, I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the importance of your while. The importance of your while. I want you to tell me what you think the while is. What is the while? The importance of your why. What is the while? You've got to be responsible for how you are, how you are, how I am. I, I, I remain calm. I, 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 I trust what the word says. I apply the word to the situation. I take it. See, that's my how. I begin to think, okay, since I'm here, I'm here. I can't, I can't do anything while I'm here, but this is how I'm going to be while I'm here. So we talked about how. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to, I'm going to choose peace. I'm going to choose peace. Okay, so now we want to figure out what your while is. Rejoice, Jeter. What is your while? Robert says it's her intent. Measure of time. That's what Mavis says. Amy, Reverend Amy says it's our walk. Teaching endurance, Jeanette. The wild is the time of perspiration for you to move to the next level of elevation. I like that, Stephen. Somebody give me now. You give me definition. I like it, Carl. The uncomfortable place where things I once do are formed. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Give me an example of, of your wild. Jessica says it's the place before you get to where you think you want to be. I like it. Uh, Sherelle says, I like that too. The thick of it, the thick of it, the thick of it. I like that, Angela. I mean, the first lady cousin, period of trial waiting in silence. I like it. Okay, so you're all getting it. What is your while? Okay, the wild shy says, my, It's my faith. Uh, Shanette said, It's in my in between. Uh, Shanette said, What's happening there is the teaching me patience. The calm before the storm, Mavis says. Okay, so you all understand the while, the while seems to be a holding place. Okay, it seems to be a holding place where very little, very little activity is taking place. So what do you do? What do you do? Let me give you an example. Christina says for her, it's a place of isolation. Otis says uh, the distance between time where you and, and where God wants you. I like that, Otis. I like it. I like it. 
in, in the holding place, uh, I liken it unto, um, okay, I liken it unto you're waiting in line, okay, uh, and you, you, you're, in the, you're in between the lines. There's six people in front of you and six people behind you. And then they close the window and say shift change on the side. <laughs> shift change, okay? It, so now I'm waiting. They close the window, shift change. Let's do, try it at a bank. And now the tellers are, are exchanging and I'm just standing there. So I could, I could start cussing. I could start fussing. I can do what most people do, look around and get to talking to others and, and trying to amp the crowd up. But what you're doing, you've got to decide what's best for you while you're in your wild. If you amp the crowd, is it going to change anything? If you start cussing, is it going to change anything? You see, you see what I'm saying? If, if, if you start humming and singing out loud, is it going to change anything? What's happening in your while is you've got to be able to focus on you and Christ only. Write that down. While you're in your while, the first thing to do is focus on you and Christ only, not the circumstance, not the situation. Focus on you and Christ only. That's where the, the partnership of the yoke comes in. Are y'all getting this? That's right. Stand. All right. So while you're in your while, if you want to make sure your how has a peaceable outcome, you focus on you and Christ only. Yeah. Yeah. Second Timothy says, I fought a good fight. I finished the course and I kept the faith. Okay? Fought, finished faith. Okay? And so because, because of that scripture, it, it allows me to know that there's going to be some type of battle while I'm in my while. See, the things that I'm sharing with you are, are things that should not, at this point in your lives, take you and knock you off your mark. They should not knock you off your mark because because life happens. Someone said the wild is life. I think that was Hillary. It should not knock you off your mark. So you should be prepared during any situations on how you choose to handle it. Okay. I choose, I constantly choose peace. I constantly choose peace. Now, let me break it down. Let me be a little transparent. I'm obese, and I don't let too many other things upset me. Because, <laughs> see, I can't be fat with hypertension and headaches, too. too. Do, you, do you understand that? So if I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose a pork chop. I'm not going to choose anxiety. Now, somebody say, well, pork can cause you to, we'll deal with that one, one day at a time, one step at a time. See, because I, I have control over certain things. So I'm going to slow walk mine and you slow walk yours according to what you're talking about with your God. What I'm trying to get you to understand is there's a choice. There's a choice. I choose when I have no control over it, not to let it upset me. I have no control. Of, I had to learn that. Critical lesson part six. I had to learn some things I don't have any control over. H how many of you realize that after you've lost your edges? That you ain't had no control over. How, how many of you re realize that your skin gotten darker and it feels like shoe leather and there was nothing you could have done? And I teach you this all the time. If there was something that could have been done, you'd have done it long time ago. If there was something you could have done, you'd have done it long time ago. Sometimes you've got to concede and realize there's only one thing I have control over, and that is my how. How I'm going to go with it. How I'm going to go through it. There's only one thing I have control over, how I'm going to go through it. Because you're going to go through. It is inevitable because it's universal. Okay, let's just stop right there. It's universal. It's universal. Now, a period of testimony. 
How many of you ever gone through something? I'm talking about going through something. I'm talking about something you thought, oh my, eye, this might take me out. <laughs> we speak life, but you've been in some situations. I thought, oh, 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 oh. I need, I need a few of you to testify. I need a few of you to testify that you've been through. I've been, in, I've been, I've been in a while. I've been in a wild situation. W h i l e, wild. Okay, Minister Constance is testifying. Dr. Dolder is testifying. Reverend Amy is testifying. Okay, I've, I've been in an ugly place. I, I'm talking to Ms. Hobbs. I've been there. Angela says, I've been there. Stephen says, I've been there. KBJ says, I've been there. Shanette says, I've been there. He'll like, yep, been there. Yes, sir. Sharon said, yes, yes. When you've been through, I'm talking about where you've had some thoughts that you would not want to share out loud in the atmosphere. I'm talking about, have you ever been through that you had thoughts about, I shouldn't be thinking that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about in a wild situation. I'm talking about in a situation that you didn't put yourself in, but somehow or another, it's my grandmother saying, somehow or another, you are, you've adopted it. Somehow or another, it gravitated your way. Somehow or another, it's sitting on your lap. It's sitting on your front doorstep. Right now, you own it. And the only thing you have control over is how you go through. How you going to handle it? How you going to handle it? I, I'm here. I'm going to handle it. Okay. This is all I can do. And the first thing you should do is what? What's the first thing you should do? What's the first thing you should do once you realize I'm here now? <clears throat> What's the first thing you should realize? That's good, Jazz. That's the first thing I got to decide. I'm going to choose my reaction. Mama Donna says pray. Cheryl says pray. Maybe it says pray and embrace. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> okay, CJ says, I'm going to give thanks and praise. Mr. Constance says, I'm going to rest in the Lord. She gonna Don just said, I'm going to recline with you. Jazz said, I'm going to talk with God like Stevie, <laughs> like Stevie said. Nicole said, I'm going to submit. Kara said, I'm going to choose peace. Shanae said, I'm going to sit still. Myrtle says, I'm going to enjoy the Bible study, but I'll depart to peace. All right, good, 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 good. Okay, that's a, that's Jessica, not Myrtle. That's right. Wait for direction, Shayla says. Talk to God. Ask. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, go back to what? Course 101, right? Course 101. And what does Course 101 say? Have a little talk with Jesus. That's what Course 101 says. Course 101 says, come unto me. Course 101 invites you to his space. Course 101 invites you to his space. So it opens a dialogue between you and your creator. Now, why did you choose the dialogue between you and your creator? Why did you choose the dialogue? Come on, let's break this down. Why did you choose the dialogue? Yeah, this is this is gonna this is a like a little slippery slope question. Why do you choose the dialogue? What are you looking for? I guess what I'm asking. KBG said because he's in control. Uh, Reverend Amy said because Father knows best. Bridget says because he has all the answers and he knows the plans for my life. Uh, he'll say, because he's the author, author and finisher of my faith. Uh, Christina, uh, okay, they're talking about the song. Direction, okay. Misty says direction. All right, all right, all right, uh, for peace. All right, so now what happens is we open a dialogue between you and the creator. You open the dialogue between you and God. And so now, <clears throat> are you asking him, here's the biggie, are you asking him for something or are you going to tell him how you're going to handle it? Talk to me. Are you going to ask him for something? Or are you going to tell him how you're going to handle it? Angela will say, he is my answer. He is my peace. Don just says, because he's the source. What is this communication like? Show me your application. What is this communication like? Mama Donna says she's going to ask, ask, ask. 
Carlos says, I'm going to pray because I need his strength. Benita says, I'm going to ask because I need his wisdom. Now, see, everybody has a different angle here. When I communicate with God, what I'm going to do, because we're yoked, I'm going to tell him how I'm going to go through the situation. Because I, I've already declared it. I'm not asking, I'm proclaiming. I'm not asking, I'm proclaiming. What I'm communicating with God about is our partnership. Stop it. Look at the application here. I got a plan. Remember, you got the route. He gave you the route. It's called the Bible. It's called the Bible. See how we go through, we, we get a little hazy when it's not taught well. I got the route. I got the route. I'm in the situation. So what I'm going to, I'm going to tell him how I'm going to handle the situation according to the playbook and what you gave me. So I'm going to lean on what the word says. I'm going to lean on the playbook. While I'm in my wild, I need to know the person that I'm yoked with is partner still partnering with me. Write that down. Are you all getting understanding? Raise your hand if you're getting understanding how we get lost. You don't have to ask God. He's already given it to you. That's why you have the Bible. He's giving you these things. What he's asking at this point is how you operate under duress with that playbook so when i contact because he's the first one i contact too when i contact him when i communicate with him when i pray to him i already know the playbook this is what i say my outcome will be miss hobbs told us the other day she said i went in proclaiming healing she, she went in i, I, I pro, I'm, I'm standing on my healing she knew the playbook so God, when you communicate with God, I'm not asking. We're partnering together based on what comes out of my mouth. I believe what his words say. So I'm standing on his word. Let me know if you're getting this. I know, I know this might be radical for some. I know this might be radical for some. I'm telling you the power now ignites that he gave you when he rose again on the third day. We cannot allow these scriptures to be bundled and boggled up together and we not pull them apart, pull them apart so we can apply them. I am powerful. I am he, but I still go through. Jesus went through. How do you think he ended on the cross? Oh, my God. Woo. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all shook up. That, no, that's Elvis. Anyway, this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. I'm trying to get you to understand when the word of God comes alive and you secure that, that's when it becomes alive. Then you'll be able to apply all those scriptures that you memorized that you didn't know how to apply before. It's like Raymond knowledge. All right. And so what you did begin to, oh, that's what that means. So when I'm going to God while I'm going through or while I'm in this situation, I'm choosing peace. I'm choosing to be calm. I realize that the battle is not mine, it's yours. And I know that you got the best at the end for me. Whatever it is, even if I know it's the best for me, you see, so it allows me to be calm and to live in peace. So I'm telling him, this is how I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do I'm going to trust you in this. You, 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 oh, you're missing that right there. I'm telling God, not disrespectfully, but I'm telling God how I choose to go through my wife. So while I'm here, while I'm waiting, 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 Reverend Don, while I'm waiting, I choose. I choose you. And everything that comes with you, God, I choose it. While I'm waiting. Because, see, while is a... In the, of time so while i'm waiting while means wait wait it's a holding pattern so i choose you i choose you i choose you i choose what the word says i secure that i not only catch the ball i secure the ball once i secure the ball then i'm able to run oh my god my god my god i should not be running without the ball because what good is it it's an incomplete pass. That's what it is. Some of you are here running, 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 like a chicken with your head cut off, with what my mama would say. Just running around. Ain't, ain't complete nothing. There, there are no victories in sight because you're not securing the word. 
The word is a part of you. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And if you are he, then the word should be you. Oh, my God. Why am I hollering at you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I need you to get this. I need you to get it because it's the application during your during, during your journey that, that you're missing. You've heard some major sermons. You all quote people. You all look at a church all day on TV. You got church on your phone. You got people out there looking cute while they're doing church. I mean, there's a lot going on out here. But until the word becomes a part of you, it means nothing. Till you secure that ball, you will never score. I don't care what you do. It's impossible to have victory without the word. Write that down. It is impossible. Had I not had a little word in me, I don't know how where I'd be. And I'm saying, you ain't got to get a lot. You, you don't have to memorize the Bible back to the beginning to end. No, no, no. You get, get, get you one of them words that mean something to you. Oh, <laughs> My, 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 my. No, I'm not talking about do never, never let your ministry be squashed because somebody memorized more Bible scripture than you did. That don't mean nothing. Don't ever let your ministry be squashed because somebody can quote and tell you where to find it. I can find it too. It's in my heart. Never let your ministry be squashed because of it. Never, never. Once you've secured the word, once you secure through faith that you believe what it says, when you need it, it will regurgitate. Oh, my, 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 mm, my. Mm, mm. mm, mm. We discussed that at the minister's meeting the other day. Once you get to going, it flows. It flows like a river. It flows like a river. And so when you begin to recognize that, I need, in order to complete this, I need to have the word secured. I need to have him secured. I need to have him with me all the time. Because if I need that victory, what good is crossing the plane? That's what that little orange thing is, the pile on. That little orange thing at the foot, uh, before you get the goal, to the goal line. What good is crossing it without the ball? There's, there's no good to it. Because you cannot score, i.e. be victorious, without the ball. <laughs> you see? So that means you're just running. You ever seen a, a bunch of kids' interpretation, little boys' interpretation of football? How they bend over and go, ha, 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 and then you just get running around? <laughs> they bend over and go, ha, ain't nobody giving them no ball. <laughs> They just seen some things. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I'm talking to some of you who don't know God, just seen some things. Mm -mm. No, you, you don't know him yet. You, you, mm -mm. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not passing judgment. No, 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 no. No, no, no. you got to decide based on your harvest if you've seen him or not. Yeah. And harvest don't always mean things. Get real. Get real. So let's go through this one more time and, and I'm gonna ask a few more questions. And so you can get this. What happens is, what happens is when we don't secure the word or have faith and believe what the word says, it's easy for somebody to knock it out of us. Somebody said, get tackled. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you, and our Sister Katrina uh, openly admitted that to me. She said, I didn't know what you were talking about, Sunday pass and reference of football. I appreciate you explaining it. Can I tell you the most vulnerable position of a wide receiver is when he's going up to secure the word? Am I right or am I wrong? Cross the middle. Okay, but that's where the hit is. Right. Okay, I had, I had to look over that at one of my male engineers. The most vulnerable position is because you're up and, and your middle is wide open. And where and where is what what is the middle hole? The soul. Come on now. That that is that is your belly. The the belly right there is the most vulnerable right there. So if you haven't secured it, if if you don't know, if you, you you're the most it's easy to get knocked out. It's easy to get it knocked right out of you. People who don't secure the word don't know which side of the street they're standing on. 
and they just wishy-washy. So you see the receiver go up. He goes up to get the ball, and his middle is wide open. And the tackle in the middle take the wind out of your sails. You're so vulnerable. You're so vulnerable. And so you've got to be able to secure some things. And so when, when the brawl is brought down, it's brought down to the chest and then it's tucked. Yeah. You've got to secure it. You've got to secure it. People who have the word, you ready? Are the biggest targets. Yeah. N not people who memorize scripture. <laughs> people who have the word are the biggest targets. Because you got the ball. Because you have the ball. Do, do, do you understand that? So you're responsible. You're responsible during your life's journey. You're responsible for how you go through. Because the playbook is there. And when the playbook, when the playbook is executed correctly, there is victory. I hope you I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. When you apply the playbook and you run the routes that's in the book and don't create your own routes. Somebody said create your own routes. Some of y'all are good at creating your own crucifixion Fridays. When you run the route of the playbook, you will secure victory. It's inevitable. God is not a man. And then God is not a man that he should lie. Yeah, the author of the playbook. I need you all to decide. I need you to decide how you choose to go through when you go through. How, how do you choose to go through? You know, my suggestion is listen to the sideline. Do not. Do not use God's intent. Do not make up your own plays. And don't lie on the coach. God told me to marry him. Stop that. <laughs> God told me to take that job. Stop that. God don't care who you. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, guys. Stop it. Stop it. You make me laugh. Hey, Reverend Sharon. Okay. So this is what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that right now you decide. You decide right now, the next time you're in your wild, how you're going to go through. You decide right now. Put it right there in the chat. How you're going to go through the next time you're in your wild. Because, see, there will be a next time. See, this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to I don't. I, I, I never have to tell you. I don't have to label something as one if there's not going to be a two. If something says one, you better, you better bank on there's going to be a two. <laughs> okay? And so if there's pressures, stress, and affliction, you know, those are universal, the word of God says. He says those sins are universal. He says because they're universal and temptations are there for everybody, then you're going to go through. There's going to be a while. You decide. Reverend Amy said, I'm going to secure the word first, then I'm going to run with it. Uh, Jazz said, I'm going by the playbook. But they still having a little free will. I hear you. Okay. Kyra said, chin up, shoulders back. <laughs> I'm in peace. All right. Stephen says, I'm going to stand tall, look at the defense and find the passing lane. I will not drop the word as the head and not the tail. That's how shot going. I'm going in head. I'm going in head first. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> Allison said, Dr. I'll say, yeah, that part. That's how I'm going in. Yes, 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 yes. How you going? The next time I'm going to listen to the coach. Jesus. Good. Good, Bridget. Good, 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 good. Choosing God, putting the word on it. Good, Missy. Good, 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 good. Quit putting stuff on God that he quit writing plays. Quit, quit trying to, to adjust his, his playbook. This is when we get a concern. And then you tie his hands because he's already written the playbook and you're running other routes. Come on, somebody say, I've run some routes in my day that were not that were not pleasing. I made some bad decisions. I made some really bad decisions. That's when you're running other routes. Because if you use the plays that were given, 
you will be victorious. Crystal said, I'm going and listening to the head coach. Like a boss with the full armor of God, Mavis said, Mrs. Hobbs said, trust and believe he never fails. Trust the coach, Sister Katrina said. Stephen said, I won't be anxious to score quickly. I will secure the ball. Carlos said, I'm going to hasten to the throne. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, Lowe's. Hold on. No matter what, stay stay, stay with the Lord. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what to say, Reverend Dog. No matter what, secure the ball. That's right. That's right. See, this is why he gave us free will. Free will says he's not a rapist. And so knowing him, there's liberality. But after a while, you've got to decide how much more of this can you take? Okay, you know what, guys? I don't talk to you all, and it's about six minutes. I better give some scriptures because folk may think I don't know any. Folk might think I don't know any. I don't know why my godson called me 11 minutes ago and knowing he should be here if, I don't know. All right, mental health issues. Uh, let's go with, uh, um, let's go First Corinthians 15 chapter. And uh, I need a reader. Because we're going to go through this real quickly, guys, because um, we did it Sunday. Go back and look at it. I don't like to be on longer than an hour. I don't want you to get sick of me. Can Do I have a reader? Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter. look at verses 1 and 2. Look at verse 1 and 2. Read on. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Okay, now, go ahead, verse 2. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, course 101. What Paul had to do, he had to go back to Corinthians, and he had to tell them again what he had taught them already. You see what I'm saying? Because they hadn't secured what he had taught. Do, do you understand? They hadn't secured what he had taught. And so now he has to teach it again. But they, they're, looking to, they, they're looking to run around. They're looking to run without the ball. They're looking, oh, we got it. We got You ever heard somebody say, I know, I know, I know. And, but then why do you keep making these mistakes if you know? I hate people to tell me, I know, I know, Pastor, I know. Well, you could have fooled me because you shouldn't be making the same mistakes. So what he says, okay, I wanna remind you. So that's what it says, he says, I'm revisiting uh, the foundation. I'm revisiting the basis. And the basis is you've got to believe because if you don't believe your journey won't do you any good, it will all be in vain. You've got to be able to believe. You've got to be able to believe. Now I want you to go to verse nine through 17, nine through 17, nine through 17. Okay, this is, we're gonna read this. It's, it's, like, it's like a syllabus, guys. He's giving it to you, but it's up to you to stay current. You see what I'm saying? Quit trying to blame something on the teacher. You all are poor students sometimes. Even in colleges and, and schools, the teacher don't like me. No, 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 you don't like you. You don't like you well enough to do your homework. You don't like you well enough to study. You don't like you well enough to believe what the textbook says. It's a, it's a personal problem. Quit looking for somebody to blame. Critical lesson six. You know, be responsible. I just stepped on most of y'all's toes. Okay, read verses nine, and I'll stop you. Start with nine, and we'll go from there. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Okay, so what he's saying is, he says, I've run my own routes. You, you, you see, am I putting it where you can receive it? I'm putting it down there right where you can get it. He says, I ran my own routes. I, I don't know why he allowed me to come back to the come into his arms. I don't know why he allowed me to come into the fold. I am a wretch undone. I, 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 I was no good. I, I, I was a murderer, a murderous individual. That's who I was. I had my own idea of where I wanted to go. That's what he is saying here. He's testifying. Read on. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And once I received it, once I got the lesson, I put the time in. You see what I'm saying? Once I thought, okay, okay, I began to study. 
I begin to stop trying to go, go to clubs. I begin to stop always trying to be on the basketball court. I begin to stop trying to hang out with my boys. I begin to stop trying to hang out with my girls at the sipping wine bar. I begin to put the time in because what I was doing was drawing the word closer to me because I could see the benefit of it. Read on. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believe. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. What good is the memorization of a scripture you don't believe? What good is it? What good, what, what, what good is these preachers falling apart? How are you getting somebody to, to, to receive what you don't believe? It is not a memorization game. You can run the route without the word, but it won't do you any good because it's an incomplete past. You got to understand that. Read on. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. What? And if Christ has not been raised, Say it. your faith is futile. You are still in your sin. Come on now. Read 17. Oh, you read 16. Oh, go, on. Go, to verse, go to verse 33. Do not be misled. Stop it. Some of y'all misled. <laughs> Some of y'all misled. And this is what happens when you don't secure the ball. Your middle is open and anybody can knock it out of you. Because bad company corrupts good character. And that's what happens. People knock it out of you. You go to church every Sunday, you still don't secure the word. And as soon as you get out, somebody knock it out of you. Laying up somewhere with somebody that ain't yours. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about? Stealing and things. You know what I'm saying to you? Bad company corrupts good behavior. So you had good intentions, but your intentions didn't lead you to anything but a life of sin. Because you have not secured the word. Read on. Uh -uh. Go to verse 58. We're going to call it a day. My time is up. Hurry up. Go to verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stop! Read it again. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Say it again. Therefore, huh? my dear brothers and sisters, what? stand firm. <laughs> Let nothing move you. Nothing. Always give Always. fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord. In what? In the Lord. In the what? In the Lord. Is that what? In vain. Uh-huh. Word, guys. <laughs> For me and my partners, me and my engineers, stand firm. D decide how you're going to go through. I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I believe what the word says, and I will cast down anything that exalts itself higher than the name of Jesus. Do you hear me? I cast it down. Healing is what I believe. Somebody said, that's my faith wall. What? Shine. You don't know nothing about that. You don't know nothing about it. <laughs> you are getting a sin sick knocked out of you every time you go up. I, I keep getting turned down for promotion because you don't believe it should be yours. When God going to send me a man when you going to get hold? <laughs> Come on now. He ain't going to send a man to somebody raggedy. Let, let's let's get it. You can take a man now. Don't get me wrong. Anybody can be married. Now we've well, come on NBC. I can teach you that. Anybody can be married. But can you be married and happy in Jesus? <laughs> Good God Almighty. You're responsible for how you are. Wow. You where you are. Wherever you are, you decide. Hey, Peaches, you decide. You decide wherever you are how I'm gonna go through. How are you gonna go through? In vain. Secure the word. Become one with the word. Become one with God. He has great things in store. We all go through. Do you kind of feel some kind of way when you're the only one calling and crying? 
Come on, build that muscle up. Build that faith muscle up. Build it up. You're responsible. Yeah, you got the syllabus, the same syllabus I have. You have the workbook, same workbook I have. Yeah, he's got a plan for your life. Can you secure that? Can you believe that? <sighs> I believe it. I believe what the word says. My time is up, guys. And I, I took five extra minutes. I really do apologize. I like to be time on task, but I need you to get this. I needed you to get the analogy of the wide receiver. The word is being tossed to and fro. The word is out there. The word is out there. Secure it. Believe it. Believe it by faith. So when you cross that pile, when you cross over that finish line, you will be victorious because the word has accompanied you all the while. You know, cover yourself, secure it. Cover yourself, secure it. The word of God. My time is up. I love you, Rochelle. Love you, Mavis. Love you, Shy. Love you, Robin. Love you, OC. Love you, CJ. Hug somebody and tell them that you love them. Love you, Mr. Constance, Lady Conley, and Joe. Love you, First Lady Cuz and Sister Katrina, Cara, Sister Ann. Hey, guys, one, couple, one more Sunday, one more week. And the third Sunday, we'll be together live. I love it. Love you, Mama Donna. Love you. Love you, Cheryl. Love you, Linda. Love you, Pumpkin. Love you, Stephen. Hey, my time is up. Thank you for giving me an extra couple of minutes from you. Love you, Reverend Gooch. The word of God. Hey, Tori. I love you. Tell Tori I love him. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, stop it. Love you, Donna, Tegan, and Sherelle. Love you, Mrs. Hobbs. Okay, guys, go ahead and enjoy your dinner. My time is up, and I thank you for spending yours with me. Bye-bye.